Hello everybody, uh, I will present you our work on reflection about the conservation of data in our Open Air Museum. First of all, we are giving this presentation as member of the Open Air Museum Randa Ardeska. We are a volunteer-based association located in the southeast of France, which has been active since 2013. The aim of the association is the outreach of the scientific knowledge about the archaeology and history of Ardèche and surroundings to the widest public possible from prehistory to the Middle Age. This presentation is a result of a few observations. There is very few publications originate from the experimentation on archaeological reconstruction conducted in French open air museums. This is particularly true for private structures such as us, which represent 18 sites out of the 26 referenced. This is linked to four main reasons. The lack of an existing network to create a link between the diverse actors. The lack of will to conserve, study and share our data. The lack of competencies and and feasibility to allocate time to any activity which is not directly financially profitable and necessary to the functioning of the site. Second assessment, if the data is not preserved, it does not mean that the built restitutions do not present interest. In most cases, the original construction relies with various technical means and materials. And the third assessment, we are witnessing a lack of interest from the scientific community towards the restitution when they are not the direct instigators. A lot of open-air museums have a scientific committee validating the hypothesis before the project starts, but very few of their members follow them when they are connected on the field. It is therefore the role of professional mediators, crash people, or volunteers to gather the data. Sadly, as previously mentioned, the required skills or time needed for a full scientific monitoring of the experiments are often missing. At Ranta Ardeska, this recording of the data from the construction seems essential for three reasons. To offer a rich and transparent outreach to our public, to enrich the global knowledge in history and archaeology, to reinforce our collaboration with the scientific community. However, due to a lack of time, it had never been possible to produce a full scientific analysis of the built restitution so far. Since then, what can we do for experiments, as modest may be, may they be, to be easily preserved to enrich an intent database and from the shared? This has allowed us to first think of the basic information linked to archaeological reconstructions, which could be documented, no matter the site, and without the regard to the skill base of the team of volunteers, may they be seasoned archaeologists, crash people, or just enthusiasts. We have therefore conceived a form which can be adapted to any construction. This form should be useful to the site willing to preserve a minimum amount of information on its constructions, as well as for more general referencing of the restitutions from the various open-air museums in the form of database. Here is a list of criteria which we think relevant to document. Location, manager, author of the restitutions, date of the experiments, type of restitution, time period, references archaeological sources, conducted experiments and hypotheses, materials used, tools used. Once this rudimentary data list established, we wanted to be able to detail the experiments conducted. This is where things get more delicate because Real-time observation of the data has not been done due to the limited human resources and the necessity to deal with the more immediate needs of touristic and associative management. The rigorous methods of experimental archaeology have not all been applied. 
and as time passes, the memories fade away. We therefore need to reorganize the data, with time optimization in mind. However, for the data to be relevant, it seems necessary for the Open Air Museum to be transparent on some fundamental points. Here is how the synthesis work is organized. And first, the management of the association. Starting off with the overall goals and general project of the Open Air Museum seems crucial to us. It is indeed what leads the restitution's creation. It allows to simply remain of the context in which this one is set on the interdependent objectives of our Open Air Museum, research, outreach, and tourism. This part also allows for the contributing actors of the restitutions to be taken into consideration. They will have an influence on the morphology of the restitution through their variable skills in archaeology and craft, whatever the site. The scientific and cultural aspects of the restitution project. The cost of the restitutions, especially in human resources, forces us to lead towards financial rentability, which is, in our case, primarily rich through tourism. In one way or another, we have to think the restitution with its cultural and scientific goods and tools. This in itself is beneficial, as this access to the construction for the public allows us to share our experiments to the greater number. It therefore seems just to clarify the touristic and associative goals linked to the archaeological work construction. All these combined elements will have an impact on the final aspect of the building. In third, the distanciation constraints. These objectives will therefore create a number of contraintes d'éloignement, or distanciation constraints, for the original archaeological data and hypothesis. This is necessary to ensure to the need of welcoming public within these reconstructions. For example, the entertainment areas, the demonstration material, the safety norms, etc. If we want the visitors to have a full sensory experience of the restitution, the construction might deviate to an extent form from the initial scientific hypothesis. For instance, a window has been added to our proto-historic wedding. There is no evidence of such a feature in the recorded data. However, it allows us to experiment an hypothesis and allows the public to see the inside of the building without us having to strictly follow the safety norms. It is of prime importance to record it solely in the database to avoid confusion between what is sourced and what is an adaptation due to our specific needs. The sources. Of course, sources have to be named precisely. Moreover, it is the moment to approach the different hypotheses issued from the excavation and compare them to the one we chosen. Finally, sources enable to justify the architecture choices of the restitution. In 5. The execution. In this section will be discussed the chain opératoire which drove us to to the final restitution. Aware that the term experiment could be misleading in regard to the limited scientific rigor of our means of action, the term operation has been chosen to detail the different phases of the construction. In this case, for instance, the data inherent to each operation were not pre-established but rather regularly adapted to the needs and constraints of the construction. Most of the construction time on the site are concomitant to public opening. Therefore, part of the team cannot be fully involved in the construction process. As a result, there is a lack of human resources to work on its evolution and produce a full, real-time report of the experience. In the meantime, it is at the core of the project for us to open our construction work to any volunteer willing to be part of the adventure regardless of their experience and skills. Volunteers with very varied profiles generate three times a year, coordinating them as well as teaching them the use of traditional tools 
is another highly time consuming task for us, even if we are very proud of this direct sharing of knowledge. As a result, if our data was not quantified, we, we still think that they remain relevant to understand how the construction was carried. Crucial element to analyze the final state of the building and its evolution over time. In the end, we can list for each operation human resources, tools used as a technique, the sourcing of the materials, and the timeline of events. Then we can draw conclusions from our manual experiences which will prove useful for the next construction, the issue to overcome, the conclusive results, etc. And finally, the conclusion. By comparing the results, it appears that our construction hypothesis presents a range of elements, from refutable to most probable. It is important to summarize and review them to pursue further research, to incorporate into our mediation the challenges of the presented hypothesis, its limit on what we discovered, always in the aim of being as transparent as possible on our proceeding. Our observations on the comparison of the results of our experiments back to the original data now allows us to start formulating new working hypothesis with more and more defined variables. Here is what we have learned from this work. First, we have the capacity to preserve a handful of useful data on our reconstructions. Second, the touristic and pedagogic aspect of the site cannot totally be isolated from the scientific goals. Finally, Without extra human and financial resources, it will be tricky to record more quantitative details of the operation undertaken. It will, however, always be an advantage to the site to have this archetype. Moreover, we hope that this retranscription will lead more students and researchers to understand the opportunity open air museums, such as Randa Duska, and the practical skills gathered by their teams can offer to develop experimental archaeology research programs. We are delighted to be able to share these thematics and hope that the solution we have been considered here, here will contribute to the enhancement of modest open air museum as us and participate to the overall preservation of this very specific type of created data. We also want to thank the village de Lormille in Melran, which teams helped us in our reflection, as well as Marie-Claire Bell, who started to work on the full archaeological recording of our now collapsed restitution. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.